surround yourself with giants. It's a good one. Here's why. I'm going to take a slight detour, but come back to it. Mm -hmm. Paul said that we prophesy according to the measure of faith that we have. Mm -hmm. So I've learned in the prophetic that you get to a stage where your your circle of faith means that anything inside that circle, you can prophesy with ease. Sure. So I know pretty much from practice and from experience that when I prophesy, I know the realm with which I can stay in and prophesy with a high degree of accuracy. Yes. The trouble is if I just stay in that faith, I'll stagnate. Yeah, you got to be with other people that are going to push you well, and stretch I, yeah, you. Yeah, I hang out with Gary Morgan. Yeah. You know, he's operating at a different level. And it yes. doesn't mean I can automatically go up there, but him doing what he does raises the barrier of what's possible. Sure. And so when you hang around with giants of the faith, what's impossible for you seems obvious to them. Yes. Again, I remember, I've told this story before, Steve Long, who's a dear friend of ours, mm-hmm. before I ever knew Steve, I thought that maybe God still healed today, but, you know, I'm not sure. Does he, doesn't he? Yeah, I'm on the fence. And, you know, I'm kind of more concerned with if God does heal today, then why are all these people unhealed? You know, I was, I was fo- majoring on that. Rather, yeah. Anyway, I go to see him in Glasgow. I don't know Steve at this point at all. And Steve stands up and he introduces himself. Hi, my name's Steve. I'm from Toronto. It's such a pleasure to be here. I'm going to teach tonight on healing the sick. And I think probably the easiest way to do that is why don't we just ask God to heal the sickest person in the room and then everybody else should be easy after that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm over here going like, I don't know if my math adds up. Can you check it? And, uh, And that's what he did. He healed the sickest person in the room and then taught. You know, you better believe he had our attention. Mm -hmm. For Steve, that wasn't abnormal for him. No. It's like, so I'm over here going, I don't know, does he, doesn't he, I can see the both sides, you know. Yeah. My faith is really small. See, Steve has resolved in his heart. He does. Steve's over here yeah. and has got like a little, so, you know, if you come to him for healing versus come to me at that time for healing, mm-hmm. two different realms. You hang around with Steve. John would say this again, like the anointing's better caught than taught. Mm-hmm. And I, that's been my experience that when I'm around people, they're not being cocky. They're not being arrogant. It's just that their history with God is like, it's a no-brainer this is going to happen. Yeah. Same thing with John and Carol. Yeah. They would show up everywhere and say, come Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit would come. Yeah. And I'd be like, I don't know if you'll show up for me. Yeah. And according to your faith, be unto you. Yeah. I think also there's a, like there was a flip side to number two, there's a flip side to that. And yeah. that is also, as much as we're saying, hey, basically hang around the generals, you know, yep. get get around those. It, it'd also be wise to not hang around with the doubting Thomas, you know, like yes. I'm just thinking about what's the verse about a fool that, hang, you, you know, it's a fool who hangs out with fools. Do you know what I'm talking about? I think you're making stuff oh. up. It's, I do know. There's a ton of in Proverbs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's in Proverbs. But well, um, a contemporary version of that is you become, you know, the lowest common denominator of the people you hang out with. Sure. So if you are always hanging around people that really aren't people of faith, that are, you know, and I'm not I'm not talking about you're an evangelist and you go out and you meet with those people, but you still have your community of faith. I'm talking about, you know, you, as you look around you, mm-hmm. you're spending probably more time with people that diminish your faith and those that build it. That's probably something to look at as mm-hmm. well. I'm aware, because this was me, mm-hmm. I'm aware that our advice of hang around giants might not be practical. Like I remember when I lived in Scotland, I didn't know any giants of the faith. They, they were all in America. Right, so I'm looking at all my prophetic giants, you know, Paul Kane, John Paul Jackson, Rick Joyner, you know, all these people. I couldn't hang around with them. Mm. But what I learned to do was read their books. Yeah. And that that's a pretty good substitute. Yeah. Then what happened is they started showing up in my dreams yeah. and teaching me and mentoring me. So, I, you know, we are in a privileged position that we know many giants of the faith. We really do. We've got yeah. personal relationships with lots of them. Sure. And you might be Very listening best. going, well, that's great for you. Yeah. You can still live. These people have written books or done teaching. Just or, listen or to it and surround podcasts. yourself. Yes. Or, you know, so there's there's lots of access that we have now that you didn't even have 20 years ago where New. you're trying to buy somebody's little white tape of Graham Cook saying something or other. I mean, you can I've get got them all over there. everything now, you know, via podcasts and the internet and stuff. And so, and that, that will work like yep. in terms of building your faith and catching something. Yeah. Yeah. 